Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here, and this week is the 40th anniversary of John Carpenter's The Thing, and we thought it'd be fun to look at John Carpenter's career and figure out what's his best movie. Hello, Crystal. Hello, Joe. Hello, Tony. What's up, Tony? How are you guys doing? Doing all right. I'm alive. Yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> 40 years of The Thing. Yeah. Feels like just yesterday I was in the theaters watching it. What did we have a conversation he, where he you were like, oh, like, Stranger Things, because they had a thing poster. Nobody had a thing poster. Yeah, that's true. No, um, no I obviously didn't see it in the theaters. I wasn't alive. Are you I sure? Gonna, yeah, I was going to say. I'm pretty, I thought you were 50 something. <laughs> You know, it's funny, they are putting it back into theaters, and this month is just too busy with too many games and whatnot. I don't think I'm going to get a chance to see it. Luckily, I I own it on Blu-ray, VHS, DVD, HD, DVD, and that's an action figure of Kurt Russell. That's really cool. I have the Laserdisc, too. Oh, what? Yeah. And you're looking at my collection incomplete? (laughs) Wow. Anyway. I don't know what to tell you. But yes, The Thing is usually considered his best movie. By a lot of people, yeah. uh, and especially with the anniversary coming up, people are saying that. But I thought it'd be funny. Let's let's look over his uh, career here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna breeze through these titles here a little bit, and then we'll focus on like what our favorites are and okay. what we think is the best. Are we doing top five or top three? Uh, we can do three. Three, three. I, think yeah, three. I, can, do top, I can do three. I can do three. So, so Maybe Casey, gonna run her up. <laughs> in case you didn't know. This is his filmography, not counting the shorts and whatnot he did in college. Uh, first one that started it all, Dark Star. The Dan O'Bannon classic. The Dan O'Bannon classic, <laughs> Dark Star. Did you get a Never chance to see it? It's on Tubi. It's good. Is it really? And it's the, or- go back and watch our Alien episode. It is the origin of Alien. Because mm-hmm. they have an Alien. They have an Alien on the ship and Dan O'Bannon's got to deal with it. And then Dan O'Bannon wrote Alien. Although the alien in Dark Star is a beach ball. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have to a, say this now. There's a lot of clever like camera work in that movie. Like the elevator scene. It's very clearly they put the elevator on the side, but like it's like, wow, they had a it, it works. It, it really, really it's works. It's like indie filmmaking at its finest. Yes. For sure. And then he did Assault on Precinct 13. I don't remember liking this one that much. Um, it's good. I think I, you should go back and give it a I think I should go back and give it another shot. They Which remade it. About? Didn't see that. That's where, um, really? what is it? The the gang takes over the police station. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they remade it in like the 2000s. I remember that. Oh, keep in mind, this is best John Carpenter that we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, Halloween. Michael? Which, yes. <laughs> Joe, I don't Halloween, know if you noticed. Right? I don't know if you noticed, What's but Halloween? I do have the Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray, VHS collector's edition, uh, DVD 25th anniversary edition. And over there, I have the blockbuster. Blockbuster presents Halloween. Yeah, right, VHS but do you tape. But do you have the Mita Halloween VHS? I don't. Mm. Actually, do man, you I have might. It? There's another. Yes. Of course, I have can. another Halloween VHS in that box over there. That might be it. I doubt it. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> that's the one that like really propelled him. It really yeah, it was did. the big one. Yeah, that yeah. was the big one. That was the big one. Uh, Jeff Lieberman passed yeah. on that movie. Just P.S. Imagine mm-hmm. that really? when it was the babysitter murders. Yeah. Yep. I like, that that that. <laughs> I like how they reference that. I like how they reference that in the new movies. They call it the babysitter murders. Yeah, yeah. He made two TV movies after this. Mm-hmm. Now you've seen mm-hmm. one. I've seen the other. Yes. I haven't seen you. You've yet. seen Someone's Watching Me. Someone's Watching Me. That one's like super hard to find too. And yeah. I don't eat. What's I, that one about? Like it, It's uh, some some chick is being stalked, but yeah. it's like a precursor to Halloween. So I don't know if that's what got him the job uh, or what have you. It came out the same year. So I wonder. Yeah. It was definitely it was definitely made before uh, oh, Halloween. Really? Yeah. But um, I can't. I've seen it. I know that it's good. I can't remember too much uh, other than that. Is and it like I d- a standard like girl next door being stalked kind of thing? From what I remember, yeah. But okay. I don't have it. I saw it through a buddy who had it, who had okay. a copy of it. I got to hunt Find that it. down. Yeah. Yeah. Then this one I have seen. I really want to rewatch it. Elvis. You told me about this. So His, his first uh, <laughs> collaboration with Kurt Russell was the 1979 Elvis movie. Did Kurt Russell not play Elvis again like later? Oh, yeah. He voiced Elvis in Forrest Gump. He played. Yeah, but didn't he actually play Elvis in another movie besides that I'm one? I'm sure he has. I know he was like an Elvis uh-huh. themed guy in that yeah. horrible Graceland, uh, 3,000 oh, Miles yeah. to Graceland. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he is the voice of Elvis in <laughs> Forrest Gump. 
Gotcha. Um, Elvis is really good from what I remember. I saw it in college. I thought it was really good. They kind of like explore like the weird side of Elvis. Like, oh, that's cool. His, how his weird family life like okay. influenced him. He's constantly monologuing to his dead brother he never knew. You should do like a comparison of, of John Carpenter's Elvis and that new Elvis movie that's the Basil, coming out. The Baz Luhrmann. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting that he did all those and then did Elvis. It's just a totally different vibe. Well, the reason, from what I remember, the reason he got Elvis is because whoever was doing and it's like, oh, you directed Halloween and did the music? You got this movie. <laughs> did he do the music in Elvis? I don't know if he did the music in Elvis. <laughs> no, I gotta like look like... through it. <laughs> Is it like old uh, synth versions of Elvis, Elvis, Elvis songs? songs? <laughs> I think it was one of those I want like that. I want the synth horror version of Elvis. Music. I think it was one of those <laughs> things where it's like, well, this yeah. guy understands music and movies. Sure. He's probably the best person for this job. And I really, really enjoyed the film. I'm actually eager to rewatch it. Um, of course, after that, he did The Fog. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, had so a good. super trouble production. He actually yeah. went back and like shot like a, what a third of the movie or something like that. And they the studio kind of made him put like a little bit more gore and stuff because yeah. mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to see the pirates a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, now they have they look like zombies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is when things start getting big. Mm -hmm. Escape from New York. Oh yeah, in Man, 1981. What a, what a great fucking movie, dude. It is. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's, it's, it's just coming out though. Every single year, though. Yeah, he was on fire. 78, he, he, 79, he was hot, yeah. 80, 81, 82, yep. 83, 84, 86, 87, 88, 92, 93, 94. <laughs> okay, 95. we got it. We got it. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's like the big. But that's I would say he's like the biggest cult director of like. Probably, cult films. yeah. But it's so. We all know it's, it's so hard to make a movie already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to do that many year after year after no. year. I mean, if the money's coming in from the studio <laughs> and they're like, hey, you got an idea? And he's like, uh, uh, you put on these glasses and you see. There's aliens among us, you know? <laughs> yeah. Speaking yeah. of aliens, Just... right after Escape from New York, boom, the thing. Yeah. Not a big hit. Not a big hit. I think it did well, though. It did okay, yeah. I guess, but I just saw... I if I looked at it right, I think Elvira was at the red carpet premiere for The Thing. <laughs> if I'm right, I'm going to cut to an image of that. I saw a thing of Elvira with The Thing on a red carpet. I don't know if that I was for the premiere that. premiere or yeah. something else. Well, again, cult, cool. we're talking like one of the biggest cult movies of all time. Yeah. Speaking of cult, next year, Christine. Yeah. Yes. What a great film. Stephen King. Yes, 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 it yeah. is. Yes, it is. One uh, of the best adaptions, too. Yes. Uh, There's not that many great adaptions of... Did you guys say adaptions? I just said it because he's Adaptation. Said Adaption. Adaptation. I literally said Isn't adaption because that's what you just said. Up. Adaptation? An adaptation. Adaption? The internet will decide I if don't it's care. right or not. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, Johanna made fun of me for saying enlarging, but that was a word. So she just looks like an idiot. Enlargement. Enlarging. Anyway. Enlarged. Treatment? Uh, How's that? Treatment? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't do more Stephen King stuff. Because Christine is really good. I'm shocked. After, like, even... With um in the mouth of madness, which I want to get into, mm. you would think he'd be doing so many Stephen King. Yeah. After just that movie alone, but I wish he did. I really yeah. wish he did because a lot of the Stephen King movies they're they're good. Don't get me wrong. I love The Shining. Mm. It like I do love all them. But if he did more Stephen King, I feel like they would be a little bit more truer to the books. Yeah. He, I he also has the the, the kind of grit. That I think a Stephen King adaption needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, he understands it a little bit more. Yeah. He it, gets more into like, he understands, it, at least for me, it feels as if he understands Stephen King's head more than let's put out this scary movie and try mm -hmm. to make it totally. Stephen King-esque when he can actually bring out Stephen King. I would work. prefer more John Carpenter Stephen King movies than Mick Garris Stephen King movies. Uh, um, uh, I love Sleepwalkers. Sleepwalkers is fun. Uh, yeah. And, and, and the stand is good too. I, I haven't watched the stand in a while. How was the new stand? What, I the TV series? The new one, yeah. I haven't seen. I'm still reading through that book. Uh, too. Okay. I, I watched the first Holy two episodes, shit. but the, it's really good so is far. It really? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, after that, Starman. I remember really liking Starman. Waiting in the sky. <laughs> um, it, again, weird. Okay, total, it's a weird completely, movie. So yeah, but now we're we're doing a killer car movie and we're just shifting right into drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, is that what, so what is love what story, is romance? Really? Yeah, yeah it's an alien. Comes it's an down. alien, but it's more it's a drama like romance story. Yeah, I like when he learns yeah. to drive from her. Yeah. Red light stop. Green light go. Yellow light go. Very fast. 
a sexy Mork and Mindy kind of <laughs> feel. You know? Let's go wait and yeah. describe oh, wow. it. Wow. Or okay. no, uh, uh, maybe not sexy. Maybe that's the wrong word. But yeah. uh, speaking of tonal shift, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Now this one was a huge flop. And I remember because I went to see this movie screened at the Trocadero, rest in peace. Yes. Um, I went to the one Trocadero event that had the most people kicked out for being drunk. Huh. No fucking way. Yeah, it was the first ever dick show road rage in Philly. <laughs> Us dickheads, we get a little we get a little carried away. <laughs> well, you heard what they... happened to me at the last road rage. Yeah. But yeah, apparently you like- stop eating um, chocolate. So much chocolate. <laughs> yeah. so much chocolate. I think but it was I the remember, peanut butter that I did. remember Dick, because yeah. I, I left eventually, but I remember Dick talking on the show that I think they complained that they haven't had to kick that many drunks out. <laughs> Holy shit. The Chocadera, like they, so I many screened drunks. a lot of my movies there. So I'm basically John Carpenter. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, right. Gotcha. They, they, uh, I'm, I'm kind of the John Carpenter of YouTube. Everyone says that. I'm also the Cody Rhodes of YouTube. <laughs> and if you look at the views of my Northman review, I'm the Robert Eggers of YouTube. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. So Big Trouble in China, I went to see it screened at the Trocadero. Maybe this is one of the reasons the Trocadero isn't around anymore. I think they said they were screening a different movie. But then they also said that it would be a live interview with John Carpenter. Failed to mention it was over Skype. They just uh, let that detail out. Oh, no. Well, they were trying to get asses in seats. Yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That probably Fucking pissed off glad. so many people. God, that place sucked for audio when you were screening short films. Uh, God, anyway. There's a lot of venues in Philly that uh, yeah. kind of suck on a lot of Well, Truck Bear is dead now. I, um, I wonder why. I still, but it's, I still love I it. I did see the Whitey's kids, you know, there. They were funny. Mm. Oh, that sounds uh, fun. So, Big Trouble in Little China, I remember people were asking him about doing a sequel, doing a sequel, and he went, guys. The movie flopped. He like looked at the audience like, no one's greenlighted a goddamn sequel for this. And then I heard they were with The Rock, but it never came to fruition. Um, oh, I'm happy it did it. Yeah. yeah. Although when me and uh, my good friend, uh, Macaulay Culkin, was on the old show, Rental Reviews, uh, he- What's Rental Reviews? Don't worry about it. Okay. He was talking about uh, the sequel one, and I think Kieran came up with the idea that the big furry monster- they just shave him, and then it just looks like The Rock. <laughs> oh, the, actually, there you go. And then I was thinking, I'm like, oh, The Rock should be him and What's-Her-Face's son. It would make no sense Kim that Cattrall. they gave birth to oh a six-foot Samoan, but it would be really funny. <laughs> so Big Trouble China, Little China, not a big hit. And Just then crazy. I don't think this movie was e a big hit either, The Prince of Darkness. No. Love it. That's one people don't talk about a lot, but I've seen it have been getting love yes. in the past so, okay, 10 when, years. When did you find out about Prince of Darkness? Because I was a huge John Carpenter fan. I didn't find out about it until like uh, high school, I think. Yeah, that's about around that time. And I stumbled on it on accident. Like I was going through like movies and they were playing Prince of Darkness. And I'm like, this is John Carpenter. I've never seen this one. And mm -hmm. I, I loved it. I famously told the story on rental reviews where um, when it cuts to the VHS footage, dream mm -hmm. sequence, yeah. like I thought, I thought someone like hacked the signal on my TV and I got like terrified for a second. That's awesome. <laughs> and like really, and I was scared for the rest of the day. What? What's going on? What? The concepts of that movie are fucking incredible. It yes. really is. And the fact that it didn't, that's actually making me realize like how many actors that uh, John Carpenter keeps bringing back oh, too, because yeah. you yes. see so many of them, mm -hmm. especially my John, uh, my uh, Sam Loomis. Oh, Donald uh, Pleasance. Donald he Pleasance. He was so fucking oh, good. God. You just see all, another side of him. I just yeah. loved him in that <laughs> it's movie. Very you know good. what I rewatched last night? What? Who am I, man? Oh God. The Italian ripoff of yeah. Superman where Donald Pleasance is the Lex Luthor type but he's dressed like me and Joe <laughs> in the Dune episode. I don't want to even, oh, say, I don't no. even say Dune. Why it looks like they? our costumes from the well. Dune episode more so than the Dune costume. Yeah. Oh, well, no. was it, wasn't he in a James Bond movie? Yeah. yeah. He was, oh Do God, the Dark Knight Rises poster was about to fall. Um, yeah, he was the first time I think we saw Blofeld, which is the image they use for Dr. Evil. Yeah, Right, exactly. Yes. Sorry, I'm not very familiar with That's James fine. Bond. Uh, and then after that, he did They Live, which I rewatched over the weekend. Oh, it's now on Shutter. It's now on Shutter. Is it? No, I'm sorry. Mouth of Madness is now on. In the Shutter. Mouth of Madness is now That's on Shutter. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, <laughs> I got to see I that was, in 35 that morning. Yeah. I'll, I did. 
I'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but they live is on Peacock. That's what it was. Yes. yes, they live is on Peacock. <laughs> now this one, I think I've seen it. I don't remember a goddamn thing about it. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I'm pretty sure that was on TV a lot. That movie was supposed to be directed by Ivan Reitman. Oh, really? Yeah, and what it happened? was a, it was a fucking nightmare. Just production. The dude who wrote it, I don't remember his name, but they just weren't seeing eye, eye to eye. Mm. And um, and then Carpenter picked it up. And he said Chevy Chase was the worst, one of the worst people to work with. People say that Everyone a lot about Chevy that. Chase. Everyone. So in Memoirs of Invisible Man, ILM does the effects, and it's very effects heavy. Mm. And they're trying to do all these like invisible things with with him. So they have to put him in like blue screen makeup and all this stuff. Yeah. He was constantly just taking the shit off, like before they were finished shooting. I would have shot him in the head. <laughs> That's not good. Like I would have just walked <laughs> off that set. Fuck that. Ugh. That sounds like a nightmare. And then here's another one that I haven't seen until recently. Yes. Uh, Body Bags. Yes. Great. And he directed two. He's the host really of the good. movie. He's yeah. like the guy yeah. in the the, the, the mort mortician. The mortician. He's also on Shutter. Yes. Scream Scream Factory did a fucking yeah. awesome release of that. Um, he did. He directed the segment, the gas station. Mm -hmm. That's the one where uh, Sam Raimi is yeah. killed before yeah. the movie. Yeah. Like you just see the picture of him, <laughs> and he did hair with Stacy Keach. That's such who, a good one. Who's and coming up in another movie? We're going to talk about. Oh yes, he is. And uh, uh, who else is it? What the fuck's his name? I just forgot his name. The guy. F Never mind. David Warner. There it is. Okay, David Warner. Yeah, he's yes. like the bad guy. I love David. Uh. Warner. Yeah, me too. Uh, David Warner, who would come back the next year for In the Mouth of Madness. Yes. This is another one. It took me a while to see until like college, and I really liked it. I'm like, so I love this good. idea. Yeah, it, it, it's so yeah. good. really good. I think and, it's one of his best movies. And, and I'm sure we have more to say about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, we're almost done this list because then it gets. I'm guessing that wasn't a that was not a big hit. That was a financial flop. Yeah, I just most, uh, of, like, most of these are, and then so they then, found so their then audience yes, later. That's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> so then, yes. of course, what do you do after a financial flop? You 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 remake something that boomers remember. He did the remake of Village of the Damned, which I actually liked. I think uh, Christopher Reeve was in that. Yeah, that was his last movie, I think, before he was paralyzed. Was it really? Yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. One of oh. them. Yeah. Yeah, I I remember really liking this, not as much as the original, mm -hmm. but I, I really dug it. The VHS it cover used to scare me as a kid oh, yeah. in the in the blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Just those little kids staring the at you. The yellow eyes, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, what do, what do you do when uh, another thing fails? You make a sequel that no one asked for, and you get <laughs> Escape from L.A. Okay, yep. Now, luckily... Unlike a lot of these sequels that no one asked for, Escape from L.A. is perfect. I don't think we have any problems <laughs> with it. Uh, I think it takes what they did in Escape from New York and expands on it and it, makes it a much better film. It's fine. I agree. And the CGI really opened up new doors yeah. for John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Vampires. Oh, man. I the James Woods this. classic. You, the you, James you, James I haven't that. seen that, and I've been wanting to watch it. Tony, did you get a little wood when you watched that movie? <laughs> a little bit. Mahog uh, a little mahogany? Not very good. <laughs> it's not a very good I know. Movie feels, I know it's not good. It feel, it's, it's actually a fun time. It just feels incomplete. Yeah. I now what it, Now, it, what though. it did do was uh, spawn a direct-to-video sequel with Bon Jovi. Uh, which led to one of the funniest Triumph the Insult comic dog <gasps> interviews. Cut I to, forgot about him. Cut to the interview now. You're in a vampire movie, yes? Yes. Finally a role that requires you to suck. <laughs> Ghost of Mars, which I have there. I didn't have time to rewatch the VHS tape, so I... I, I know I should have rewatched it because maybe it is the best John Carpenter movie. I don't know. If John, but from my memories, I don't I, remember it being very good. What do you think? Um, I, it's like John Carpenter phoned himself in. Really? Yeah. It's just it's just not. It's it, got what's bad. It about? It's got bad visual effects. It's like they. It's it's kind of Doom, where they're Basically, on Mars, but then these like, what are they? They're like zombies. They go crazy and they get like wow. turned. So is it just towards the end? It just wasn't like the last like main movies. It, just it was the movie that he abandoned. No, no, no. Was it? Yeah, it was the movie he abandoned Hollywood over. Yes, yeah. yes. And then he did oh, two geez. Masters of Horror TV movies. Cigarette Burns is great. I didn't see Cigarette Burns. Oh my god, dude, do that tonight. If you're not doing okay. anything tonight, watch. Cigarette now, what is Burns. Cigarette Burns How? about? Just give us a brief. Yeah. Cigarette That's Burns is about um this like uh. Lost film called uh, uh, La Fin Absolute Demand, okay, which is the end of the the 
final end of the world or the end of the world. Okay. And um, it's basically uh, Norman Reedus is in it, and he um, and he has to find this film for Udo Kier because he's looking for it. It's like this super rare film, and. Uh, upon the, so the first showing of the film, like it made all these people go crazy, and there was like a big like, uh, you know, they like, killed each other and stuff, and all this crazy mm. shit mm. surrounding it. But it has to deal with like this real angel that was on film, and they like cut its wings off and all this stuff. It's okay. really cool. I don't want to ruin That's too much okay. of it. Check Where it out. Where the hell can I watch uh, Masters, Masters of Horror? Yeah, uh, I have the box set. So maybe it's on. Of course Amazon. you do. Well, it's in that skull. Yeah, I think now. that was the first the first season. Yeah, though. yeah. Now. I saw his second Masters of Horror Pro Life. Pro Life, which I thought was really fucking awesome. So here's the story of it. A girl is trying to get an abortion at this clinic, and Ron uh-huh. Perlman is her super, like, crazy Whoa, conservative God father. Ron Perlman. Wait, get, get ready for this. Get ready for this. You're not ready. You're not ready for this. Okay. So Ron Perlman, he's, like, taking the clinic hostage because he doesn't want his daughter to get an abortion. He's, like, going around. I think he kills people, and... It's like, oh no, this crazy guy is going to be shooting up this abortion clinic. Turns out the reason she's getting an abortion is because she was raped by a demon and was about to give birth to a demon baby. Well, they think it's they think it's God or like an angel. Yes. Ron Perlman's like, this baby needs to be born, even though the baby is going to be a demon baby. Yeah. Well, he doesn't know that until it actually comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I it's it's oh. you know what it's all right you know what? it's not as good as cigarette burn not one of his that best cigarette burn sounds fucking awesome it's really and, it, and, it, and it's in tune um i guess i'll just say it now but it's it's in tune with like the apocalypse trilogy kind of okay cool. it's almost like the wind in the keyhole of the dark tower series kind of just <laughs> tacked on at the end it's very cool sweet and then his final directorial film was uh the ward from 2010 mm. yeah. about women in like an insane asylum but i love I think, split huh split right no <laughs> oh no no the ward the, oh okay no the ward uh <laughs> they're in an insane asylum and i think there's like ghosts and stuff i only saw it Ooh. once years ago um i remember it being like whatever it's not the worst thing ever don't they have a split yeah the chick has a split personality doesn't she that's like from the, what I that's re- the twist from what I remember. Spoiler! <laughs> Spoiler I thought I remembered Ghost. I haven't watched it in a really long time. I remember very few things. I know Daniel Panabaker from The Flash is in it mm-hmm. um, as a supporting character. And the thing is, with these kind of movies, you need a really good lead actress to really like, yeah, like like connect with in the film. Yeah. Who, and the woman he got just was not up to the task. She did a really bad job in this movie. Who was it? Let's just say she shit the bed. Anyway, <laughs> now we've gone over briefly. His directorial catalog. Mm. Um, I know he produced a lot of movies. Halloween 3 doesn't count. He didn't ah! direct it. That's why he was like, so what's your favorite John Carpenter movie? He's like, like, Halloween, Halloween 3. 3. And I'm like, that's He's, not. No, he has to, it's the ones that he directed. <laughs> Tommy Lee Wallace. He's... But, I mean, it was created by John Carpenter. Yeah, but it we're was. talking about directed. Yeah. He did, his soundtrack is actually more. So it looks like. 77 on his tr- soundtrack, 60 for writer, 40 for composer, 24 for music uh, department, and 32 for director. Well, well, writer, do, do they count just characters by? Because then you factor oh, in all the Halloween yeah. sequels. Which yeah. is kind of bullshit. Yeah, it does say characters you know? by. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, yes. A soundtrack. Holy we, shit. It's cash yes. a check for sure. He does, he, well, yeah, I also, saw him on tour. It was cool. I want to see him on tour so bad. I didn't know he went on tour. Yeah, uh, my buddy Chris Barr got uh, me tickets for that show yeah. for my birthday one. I really want to. I'm not awesome. a live oh, music guy. Why? I just don't really like live music. Are you music. like an earplug guy? You don't like live music? Rarely. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, like, I guess I just don't go to concerts, but whenever I see live music, it's like with friends at a bar and then you got to talk over the music. No, 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 no. Oh. It, you're going to the wrong things. Yeah. You, okay. last week, you, you're, yeah. you're going to see Big Trouble in Little the- China with a bunch of fucking drunk people, which yeah. I can't stand when there's people that won't shut the fuck up during the movie, even if I've seen it a hundred times. No, I'm fine with that. No, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm that makes okay. the movie better sometimes. I can't believe you said you're not live That was actually music, one of the most fun man. times I had watching Big Trouble in really? Little China. What was that? I can't believe you said you're not a live music fan. Yeah, I'm not a big live music guy, but I did go to an Alanis Morissette cover band last week. Yeah, at the bar, and I, I knew all the lyrics to all the words. Also, that songs. was not me dancing there. <laughs> oh yeah, someone thought that was you dancing the video. I d- I do not dance. Yeah. Badly. I uh. <laughs> What 
about um, when they play, I've worked tons of these events where it's the movie and then you have an orchestra play. I've never been to one of those. Oh, I they're have so I did. I did good. one at the Philomoka. Well, when Philomoka was closed and they put it at some other like club down the street, they had uh, Claudio Simonetti come with mm. Claudio Simonetti's Goblin. Oh. And they did the entire oh, cool. uh, Deep Red from Front Rosso soundtrack cool. to the movie. And it was crazy because it was like me and my wife and like two other people. <laughs> and I'm fucking sitting like five feet away from Claudio. That's but I saw good. Goblin in Brooklyn and then I saw them. I saw half a Goblin <laughs> because it wasn't the, it's not the, it wasn't the entire original band. Oh, really? So half in uh, Brooklyn and the yeah. other half in, uh, where the hell? Starlin Ballroom? Or somewhere. I love Starlin Ballroom. Yeah, no, and they played with Zombie. That was fucking great. In 2013. October 2013 is when they played in Philly. It was like their first tour in America or something Yeah, like I have that. the t-shirt. <laughs> I have the sign poster. But I was in New York. Oh, gotcha. It was so The Haunt Love good. one? I have like this foil Haunt Love uh, mm. poster that hangs. I mean, the, the one that's hanging up in my bathroom upstairs. The best concert <laughs> I ever went to was Neil Diamond in 2008. I love Neil Diamond. Dun, dun, dun. I have so many of uh, his um, records. I'll take them. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to give them to you. <laughs> you now, can find them at the flea market. Now, Jesus, let's, that's all let's really, yeah. <laughs> Good let's really, enough about, about live Diamond. music. Oh my God, I can talk about Christmas live music albums. for Let's really hours. dive deep into a couple of these God, films. Okay. The music's so good. So we'll do two favorites and then what we think is the best, okay? Okay. So Joe, what's your first favorite John Carpenter film? I've been thinking about this for like a week, all right? <laughs> and I'm going to say my favorite one, I'm going to steal your thunder on this, probably, uh, is In the Mouth of Madness. Yep. <laughs> now, the favorite. reason for that is that I'm a big Lovecraft fan. Mm. And throughout the entire filmography of John Carpenter, you've seen all types of nods and and kind of uh, story beats and, and ideas that emanate from the influence of mm -hmm. Lovecraft. So um, mm -hmm. In the Mouth of Madness really captures that for me in yeah. a big way. And it kind of has this, um, I love how he incorporates like the author in it too. Uh, yes. you're, you're, what, it's Jürgen Proch now, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, as by, Sutter King. by the way, what the hell happened to his career? He was in Dune, this, he was in a bunch of big movies. Maybe Judge Dredd is what happened. And then to his he did career. House of the Dead. Because then he did, yeah. Yeah, he, then he does like shit He's like in Wing. Doc's boot yeah. for he does like yeah. Wing Commander, yeah. and then he ends up being in House of the Dead. It's like, oof. Paycheck. Anyway, uh, yeah, I watched I watched a little bit of In the Mouth of Madness last night, and then I passed out. Um, not Sam because of the movie, but because I was working until 1.30 a.m. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Sam Neill is incredible in that movie. Sam Neill is great oh in it. Uh, I got the Sutter Kane replica covers from yeah. this guy in like Sweden, You're I think. Me. Yeah, I ha I've had it from years ago. I've, I'll dig it out and maybe yeah. you can show the By picture. By the way, I really, I really relate to Sam Neill now in the mm -hmm. beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. When everyone's talking about something that's popular and he's like, what? Like they're like Sutter Kane, Sutter Kane, Sutter Kane. It reminded me of like Game of Thrones. Like you watch yeah. Game of Thrones, you watch Game of Thrones. Like did you no, read I Sutter Kane? I didn't. I didn't get around to Game of Thrones yet. And then like, what was it the first year? It's like Mandalorian. Did you see Mandalorian? Did you see Mandalorian? I was like, no, it looks terrible. Yeah. And you gotta see it. You gotta see it. Okay, I will. And then I watch. I'm like, oh, this is like the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, little did I know they further ruin it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really related to him. Like people are obsessed with Sutter Kane. He's like, I don't give a shit about. It. And then we, even when he's reading the book, he's like, Yeah, it kind of hooks you in, but it's pretty dumb. And I'm like, I really relate to this character so much. <laughs> but what if like, what if like uh, uh, Pedro Pascal just started appearing like oh in my your God. room, <laughs> and Baby Yoda just started like popping out of your toilet or something? <laughs> You are actually oh. in Mandalorian. You have to know yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was one of the cool, like the trippiest things I saw when I first saw this movie uh, before I got like real into David Lynch stuff, yeah. uh, which oh, which ends up out tripping this. Oh, I did think that was a David Lynch episode. Yeah, we should. Oh, Please. God, I got to do a deep dive on a lot of his films. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, I like when he like goes to the town. He sees the black church, which is a real black church in somewhere in Toronto. Oh, really? Yeah, is Hobbs that where End, they yeah. filmed it or uh, Ontario? They filmed it somewhere in Canada. But yeah, I love the whole idea that like enough people believing in this like brings Get, it to life. Yeah, it's like this tulpa kind of thing. It's really neat. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, I love. It led to the the whole famous like I'm not insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh yeah, when he's in his cell. Yeah. yeah, I love when he's eating popcorn in the fucking movie yeah. theater. Oh my god, and he's just fucking losing and it. He just laughing. loses it. It's he great. just loses the whole it. movie. You really have to pay attention to too. Yeah. Go ahead. So, 
so out there in the galaxy far, far away, yeah. the Mandalorian has manifested. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? I guess so. Oh. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and whatever other new shit people were watching that I just <laughs> haven't gone around to or reading. Like, oh, did you read the Hunger Games? Read the Hunger Games? Mm. Did you read the Hunger Games? I actually did. They're, they're really good. They're all right. I didn't the that second book is pretty good. The movies were okay until yeah, like... I mean, the first one, it was, like, derivative of a million things. But then, like, I got into, like, the second and third one. By the fourth one, you could tell Jennifer Lawrence checked out. Mm. And she's just sleepwalking through that role. The, that last book is fucking weird, dude. There's, like, lizard people and shit when they go to the Capitol. Anyway. Really? Yeah, they're Oof. in the movie. We're brief. Are they? I didn't see that. Well, there's, like, a variation of them. Yeah. I didn't get um, that big into it. What it reminded me was the Harry Potter books. Yeah. When mm. everyone oh, was God. Going, no, yeah, that's, that's the one. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Do you read, do you read J.K. Rowling? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, only her tweets, and I agree with every one of them. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but I haven't gotten around to her books. I haven't gotten around to her. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to say oh to me. I, I cracked up uh, someone here at work the one day because people were talking about J.K. Rowling. I'm like, yeah, I don't read her books, only her tweets. <laughs> it took, it took like a minute for the joke to sink in. Oh, <laughs> I just no. saw somebody like turning into do, to a dementor, just like, you read J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Yes, kills a fucking exactly cop with an is. axe. That's the part that hooked me on the movie, by the way, because I'm watching the movie. And I'm like, all right, what's this about? And the crazy guy tries to kill him, and I'm like, okay. I've seen that before in a John Carpenter movie. And then it was just like, oh, by the way, that was his agent. I'm like, all right, now I'm invested. What, what's happening the here? Whole, that's what you got invested? Like, there was so... You don't no, 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 that that's, what, that's what got me, like, uh, like hooked in the beginning of the movie. I'm like, all right, there's more here. You don't find I, that that's the agent until later in the movie. No, not You find it pretty early in the movie. Do you? Yeah, before they send him off, they said that that was his agent. Yeah, and that's why I think oh, that's, that's, that's right. why he, when they're in the office. That's why he's finally like, yeah, I think I'm, let's let's do this, right? Yeah, I'm pretty right? sure. Yeah. yeah. I didn't that. just watch it, so don't quote me. <laughs> I just watched it yesterday. Yeah, yeah you can oh. watch it on Shutter. If you yeah. have a Shutter account. Well, I yeah. bought it. I bought it. So <laughs> I didn't realize that until I. Literally, I bought it. Well, that's the way to do it. You should. I don't mind you it. should own this movie. Well, yeah. I wish I bought it. So. I do need to get now. it now. Yeah. yeah, I did a uh, John Carpenter marathon yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, let me rewatch the movies I haven't seen in a hot minute. I've seen The Thing and Halloween a gazillion times, so let me go back. And uh, The Map of Madness was, I ended up just buying it through Amazon Prime. Yeah. And then I saw a Facebook thing saying, oh yeah, Shutter has it By for free. Thank, like, you God damn it. thank you for sending that to me so yeah. I didn't have to buy it. <laughs> Again, yeah, I think I like, yeah. Scream Factory released a nice yeah. Blu-ray too. So I would love and Prince of Darkness. If, I have the yeah. 4K Blu-ray Prince of oh, Darkness. Oh, there right you now. go. It's beautiful. If we're oh, it's got the original art on it too. Yeah. yeah. My whole thing is, if there's a good movie, I will actually buy a physical form of it. Though. Yeah. So I'm kind of sad that I bought it digitally and not the physical form. Oh, you're That's good. what made me sad. It's the thing you can't of return like, it. It, well, not only can you not return it, but you also can't take it off Amazon and like put it on a disc or, no. or have an actual file of it. It's just like, well, you bought it and it's on your it's account there. until it dies. Until exactly. I mean, there's a way exactly. to put it on the disc. It's well. very time consuming, but yes. <laughs> But that um, made me sad. And I was sure. like, mm, maybe I'll find it at like a good one. That's where I get like all my DVDs and VHS. Well, there you go, yeah. But yeah. Also, okay. I don't know if you know this, but you have two people here that have a shit ton of fucking movies. Yeah. Well, if and you if have you're like, hey, Chris, well, I don't I'll know just... if you know this, but you hang out in the video store <laughs> often. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we, we can, you know, we can, we can, uh, we can get you movies if you need them. Okay. At a price. <laughs> anyway, um, but, you're but can so I just say, you've been freeloaded in this store for two years now. <laughs> you got to start. Pay up. Oh you my god, so it has been almost two years. Holy <laughs> yeah, shit! The late fees the are outrageous. Yeah. But yeah, in the mouth. No, of I just steal the shit. <laughs> um, the cover work, the cover of the VHS, yeah. Yeah. or at least I saw of um. On it's like the, the pages Prime. with the yeah. Thing. the yeah. book alone because I'm such like a book dork. Mm -hmm. is, awesome yeah. like i love that artwork that cover so cool just going into the whole story aspect of it and it's so many twists and turns mm -hmm. in it and it, such good effects oh yeah they're and killer. even the title uh in the mouth of madness is kind of a play on like at the mountains of madness yeah yeah everything is Isn't there like i mean a, it's very love wasn't the there like an yeah. 18 foot wall of monsters that they built for the movie yeah at the yeah. very end when jurgen proch now is like this is the madness no because you're in the mouth of it now, and then they show it all. <laughs> it's cool. And it's like running down this thing yeah. behind him and stuff. It's cool. But yeah, I, I highly recommend that one. It's really, really fucking now, good. Crystal, Very good. What's your what's your first, not like first favorite, but what's your first pick for favorite John Carpenter movie? Mouth of Madness. Well, sorry, I took that from you. It's just, it's so in-depth. Okay. And what? you 
Okay, what's my second? What's your second Sorry. pick for? It's okay. It's okay. I just, in the I for, go for best the John Carpenter, but <laughs> favorite John Carpenter movie. Um, they live. Okay, I would actually say they live. This one I rewatched so over. The, this one I rewatched over the weekend. God damn it! There was one convention. I'm still trying to hunt down the pictures. I don't have them backed up digitally, but I met Roddy Piper. And like I got yeah, the picture yeah, yeah. like with the glasses with him. That's awesome. Um this one I actually haven't seen too much. Mm -hmm. I did rewatch it this weekend and I'm like, right now I'm the, this is the most important John Carpenter movie because <laughs> you know me. Fucking government and authoritarianism yep. and goddamn media. Uh I'm like, wow, this movie is ringing true more than ever. <laughs> Tony puts on the glasses and just says, Man, watch Mandal watch Obi-Wan uh, Kenobi. Yes, exactly. Literally, every time you guys post about a Star Wars thing, all I see is consume, consume. What is that? Consume. What, what, I didn't do it. I didn't post about it. I, I secretly seen. watched Obi-Wan Kenobi and then conversed it about it. How could it possibly be good? They're all terrible. I haven't watched it, and I also didn't see the second season of Mandalorian. It I... starts off with a... That is such a subjective question. <laughs> no, um, no, it's definitive. It's terrible. <laughs> Ewan McGregor is the worst Obi-Wan Kenobi actor of all time. Put it this There's way. There's only been two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what the fuck? Put it this way. I thought I w we were going to get something completely different than what we got. Okay. And it just feels like an extension of the prequels, and I don't know how I feel about it <gasps> yet. I've only watched the first two episodes. I think it's I like don't. the most realistic alien invasion movie. Agreed, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. they're like, we're gonna like try to manipulate your mind this way and that way. And we're gonna team up with some of you. We're gonna bribe you guys. I love how Roddy Piper's just like a fucking bum. Yeah. That's yes. my favorite. It's not like this guy who worked for the government no. or any of this bullshit. He's just like a regular ass dude. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. No, I really like Roddy Piper in this. Keith David is really great. Keith in this. David's great. I love Buck uh, Flower. Meg he like, good he too. just he yeah. tr switches sides so yeah. quick. <laughs> like he's the bump. Well, no, Buck Flower. So, spoiler yeah. if you didn't know who Buck Flower was in the movie, you've probably seen him in 10,000 movies as yeah. a bum. I think yeah. literally the first episode of this show, Wishmaster, he was a, a bum, bum in yeah. that movie. He's uh, a bum, yeah. Yep. Which is actually fun. So you don't really get to see Buck Flower as not a bum. Yeah. He's in a fucking tuxedo. He he's is. like, yes. I got to see him in the tuxedo and he's looking really nice. Like, yeah. Buck yeah. Flower was actually a decent looking guy. Welcome yeah. to the welcome to the alien thing, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you're right. I love the whole it, alien invasion angle. I, I love that, like, because already. Uh, Roddy Piper's character is not really integrated into society as yeah. the way it yeah. should be. Like yeah. once he finds other aliens, he's just like, "Well, oh, this is another thing I can't fit into." And he's like, "Well, fuck all of you." Yeah, I love the glasses. I love, but he believes in America and what it should be. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's but like me. I'm like, I believe in America. It doesn't oh exist God. for me, but I believe that it can. <laughs> Keep going. Mm. I love that when he puts on the glasses, though, the whole world is black and white. Even when they put the contacts yeah. in, it's yeah. still black and white. Yeah. And it it really does symbolize, like, okay, this is what they want. You can see it nice and clear. You see the faces nice and clear. I just found that so fascinating because it's very, it rings true to society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. There's such, like, a heavy message on it, but it's yeah. also so much fun. And it has the best fight scene Oh, it does. Ever. Put on the glasses. What, the Keith David, Roddy Piper yeah. fight scene that goes on it's forever? It's so long, but South it's Park so... Right no, no, that's the thing. It's, it's one so of those, real. It's yeah. one of those things, it does feel like, well, he, it feels he, real. he was a wrestler. Well, uh, yes. It's one of those things where, like, it feels like it's going on too long. But then it goes on like, just long enough where you're like, all right, now this is okay. kind of funny. That was fine. <laughs> I love when you think the fight is done. <laughs> <And then laughs> just gets right back Off screen. Uh, I uh, love when he's just making fun of the aliens. You, you're okay. This one, real fucking ugly. Uh, <laughs> he's like, you, you're okay. This one, real fucking ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just fun and it felt very down to earth, mm. but yet not at all in other parts. I just yeah. felt like it was just an awesome ride that kind of sits in the back of your head with a heavy message. Yes. I uh, to your point about the black and white stuff, that artistic choice to do that was so great because it's like like the, the saying, like seeing yes, things in black and exactly, white. Exactly. Yeah. You know exactly. What I mean? Also, it helps with effects. It's right there. And you can cover up yes. effects with black and white a lot better. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, um, they don't look that bad. Well, it's right now. No, 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 they no they're good really effects, good. but like, 
you know, we, we've talked all the time. Like oh, sure. Compositing with the little ship mm-hmm. flying around mm-hmm. in color, you would have noticed more. But I mean, black and all white. kinds of stuff from noise to film grain, mm-hmm. all kinds of shit that can cover. I love the like aliens. That. They just look. They so, look so <laughs> they're just the dumbest crazy. looking things, and I love them. But it's they're so like, iconic looking. I know. Yeah. Like they're goofy, but they're awesome at like, the same if, time. If you told yeah. me like. He someone was just like, "Yeah, I have these zombies left over." Yeah, yeah. sure, make them purple. They're aliens now. That's <laughs> what it looks like. It's like um, um, Attack from Mars, or I'm sorry, Mars Attacks, yeah. and um, these aliens are my two favorite looking they're aliens. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. very they're ack ack and with that's the, exactly all the teeth. what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's really good. They got to like destroy a signal and whatnot. There's humans turning on other humans. That's yes. how, that I like a lot too because it shows yes. that anyone will do things for money and power. Yes, because they're like, well, who else are you going to side with? It's like you literally just turn on your human race. You don't actually have any morals. You just care about yourself. What the fuck is wrong with you? But so much of society is like that. That's the best part about Buck Flowers' character mm-hmm. is that he was just like this homeless dude with fucking no pot to piss in. And yeah. I was like, hey, fuck that. Let the aliens take over. Look at my suit. Yeah. And my yeah. watch. And I'm, I just well, ate a buffet. Thing. That's the thing. The aliens yeah. are, it's easy to take over Earth because like humans are so divided that they can like play them against each other yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's got one of the best endings I've ever seen in the mm-hmm. movie. I love that the John Carpenter. Stops, I love John Carpenter does. shouts himself oh. out at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Filmmakers like George Romero and John Carpenter have to show some restraint. Like these movies by John Carpenter and George Romero. Oh. <laughs> but I just love the guy at the bar. He's just like. <laughs> people oh, are like, oh shit! And they're and all like the oh. reporters were the like cause, uh, uh, spoiler at the end. And people can now see the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you just see the reporters like, why is everyone running? And yeah. Like, yeah. Like, oh oh my god, they're available. <laughs> that, but that very last scene yeah. is the best to end on. It really, I was like, wait, was there? Wait, I thought there was more, and it really just just, it just ends. Yeah. Where she's just like, you just see like topless chick on top of a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and it's, he's it's like, one of the aliens. Up, baby, it's one or whatever. Like, yeah, What's wrong? I was like. That is the best. <laughs> and it's a shame a that movie. like Roddy Piper didn't like he he direct, he acted in more movies and stuff. We covered one on Tubi called Immortal Combat, where he actually teams up with Meg Foster again. That's a great mm. flick, and so is that movie uh, is really good. It's really good, and so and so is uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown. Hell Comes to Frogtown's right. Really, yeah, so I now I'm sitting there. See that you told me to watch. So that. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, I've seen three movies starring Roddy Piper, and they are all great. I'm like, mm. is he in more? I need to see more. I think he voiced a Green Lantern in this one Green Lantern animated oh, film. He might have. I mean, there. I know he's in more movies. I just can't think of him yeah. off the top of my head. So, yeah. I really love They Live. Yes. So, I guess my first favorite. I know what my favorite favorite is. Ooh, the, 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 like, finding a, a second favorite is a little rough. Um, Wait, we just only did our first favorite. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I meant, like, well, your I first second. favorite that you're. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I have to say, I think in recent years, I'm, I'm going by like what I rewatched the most. Okay. Right. That's what I went by. So I'm thinking, I'm like, it was almost Big Trouble in Little China because that is one that I watched like religiously, especially yeah. in college. That was my hangover movie. That was my go to hangover so movie. So good, man. Uh, I think it's Escape from New York. Escape from New York. The ultimate adventure of escape and survival. Mm-hmm. Really? I rewatched that one a lot. I listened to the soundtrack of that oh, film yep. a lot. It's so good. That's a good soundtrack. And again, Snake Play. You know what? I kind of want to group them together. Both escape movies. <laughs> They're <laughs> so fun. good. Draw. I connect with the Snake Plissken character. Again, I think John Carpenter might have influenced my politics a little bit. I don't know because when the <laughs> choice say. when the choice comes per, from protecting either for, in the second film, he has a choice to either use this weapon to destroy America or its enemies, and he destroys the entire world and says "fuck it" just because they pissed him off that day. And I'm like, I fucking love this character. <laughs> I love in the first one where you meet him. And you find out he was this military guy and he just doesn't care anymore. Oh, yeah. What's this line? Fuck your president. He's like, get a new president. Yeah. I don't care about your war. And you seem to like really like a lot of John Carpenter movie as our characters that just don't give a fuck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Uh, I love when he's like the president, uh, like crash New York and Snake's like president of what? Like he doesn't even <laughs> care. Uh, it and just, he means nothing. And by the way, there. it's such a great concept. The first mm-hmm. one where it's like, hey, you got to go in here. And you got to save this guy. And it's like a war zone. Mm-hmm. And it's since been done in many other things. Like the Batman Arkham 
yeah. series. Oh, big time. Yeah. Like the comic mm-hmm. and yeah. the couple of the movie and the games. It's pretty much Escape from New York. It's that's like, what, you gotta go that's to what my wife back. said. <laughs> when yeah. she saw it, she's like, oh, this is like Arkham City. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a vice versa. Yeah. Um, and who knows if they did this concept before. Maybe they did. I feel like it's one of the first times they've yeah. done it. Uh, James Cameron actually worked on the first one. Really? He did most of like the matte paintings mm-hmm. and oh, stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah the visual actually really stuff. cool. Uh, and they look great. The effects are pretty good in the first one. Not so much the plane falling. That one's bad, but like, they didn't I have mean, like computer imagery for yeah. like the 3D model of the city, so they just had green glow in the dark tape, and they filmed a miniature set. I'm like, that's fucking awesome! It looks awesome. Yes, and like I said, uh, a lot of people think the first one's a little too slow. I think it moves just well. Are you an impatient person? You know, no. What I, mean? I mean, the the action could be like shot a little bit better, but for what we get, I think it's fine. I and love the whole fight scene. Depends on like what yeah. your style of movies are though. Yeah. Too. yeah, I mean, but if you want a more action packed version of the movie, well, thank God we have Escape from LA <laughs> with the most amazing surf scene I've ever seen. <laughs> he surfs on lava or some shit? No, no he surfs just water. Oh. But, uh, yeah, the, the water like washes it. I haven't seen uh, it in a long I don't time. know, I just think they're really good movies. The soundtrack is great. The look yes. of the character is great. This was definitely my, I watched this a lot in my I want to be Kurt Russell phase that I mm-hmm. never accomplished. I think everybody goes through that. I did shoot a short film, and I can't put it on YouTube because it keeps getting taken down for copyright. I, in college, I did Escape from Jurassic Park, and it's Snake <laughs> Plissken has to get the president's second favorite nephew or whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, in Jurassic Park. <laughs> and it's so terrible. The effects are so bad. <laughs> There's too many damn dinosaurs. But I had the the camo pants, and this yeah, is yeah. when I was not a thousand pounds, and I had the really long hair, and I'm like, I want to be Kurt Russell for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I highly recommend Escape from New York. It's it's solid, and Escape from L.A. I'm grouping them together. That's fine. fine. Double feature. Yeah. What's your next favorite one? Um, it's hard. It's tough. Do you not have one? Uh, I, yeah, but I'm just trying. Um, they're going this one, this one, this one, this one, this one <laughs> in my head. Um. I would probably say the thing. That's your favorite. Th- that and in the mouth of madness are the two that um, I think are my favorites. Okay. Um, are we doing the are the well, best? Well, yeah. I was gonna say I'm like, well, now I need you to stop because we gotta get to best. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess uh, if you were if you exhausted your favorites already. Um, I mean, I really do like Prince of Darkness. It's like mouth of madness. Mm. Uh, they live. Prince of Darkness. No. I do, like, it's, it's hard because, no. like, Halloween is, like, I keep forgetting, okay. like, Halloween that, is well, I will I'm such a classic. I will say my favorite is Halloween. Because that's the one, that tape right there. Yeah. Uh, that's when I saw as the earliest as a kid. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with it. I'm still obsessed with this yeah. movie. Yeah. I've seen it in the middle. I know every line of dialogue in the film. Yeah. It led to my friendship with my best friend who I'm still friends with to this day. Aww. We still quote this yeah. movie. Tony's got friends. Uh yes, <laughs> I I love everything about Halloween. It's yeah. such a good sure. horror film, like a real down to earth horror film. It's I know petrifying. The sequels make it weird. But uh just like the idea of just like yeah, these girls are just hanging out and it's one of the few horror films where I actually get to know and care about the characters. Yeah. Big time. yeah. And it's like, cause they're not like, I mean, the Friday 13th, they kind of like, this is the bitchy one. And that's the bitchy one. Oh, right. And that's the quiet one. She's a bitch. <laughs> but uh, Halloween, it's just like, no, this actually, and I always say this is important cause I think Deborah Hill wrote most of the women's dialogue. Mm-hmm. So that's so why it like rings a little yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we've seen what happens when men write high school women's dialogue. You get Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yes. Oh, my um, God. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's such a good film. Uh, I love the, Jamie the, Lee Curtis as, like, your yes. classic scream queen right there. Yes. Your classic. And, and he created that classic does final with, scream queen. And, what it does and with Cundi story, cinematography, dude. What it does with oh, storytelling, yeah. like, there's that there's that one rule that it's, like, show, don't tell. But, like, Donald Pleasant's just describing the origin and stuff of Michael Myers and his background is so effective. It's a great monologue. And I'm not going to linger on it too much because I did do a commentary track years ago, mm-hmm. which is available on Patreon, <laughs> um, where I talk about this film at length. But that is definitely my favorite. Now, I guess we'll get into the best. What's your best? I think, okay, so so we were talking about this uh, off air, but it was, it's one of these things where like, 
the diversity in his films. Mm. You have action movies, you have dramas, you have love, yeah. even a love story, and semi-comedy, and horror, of course. Mm. And there's just all these different elements to all of these different things, so that's why it was so hard choosing uh, uh, what was, was my favorite in the first place, but I just chose ones that I watched a lot. Yeah. The yeah. most. Um, I would say his the, the best John Carpenter movie, and I'm talking... Super well-rounded, has a little yeah. bit of everything for everybody. It's Big Trouble in Little China. That's really? a good one. That's a good one All to right. pick. It's got it's got the Chinese folklore. It's got your you, you know your your really wisecracking yeah. action hero. You got a little bit of horror in there. You got a little bit of romance in there. The, you got monsters. You got monsters. Uh, this is one of this is like Johanna's. Like I think. Uh, I'm not here. I mean, she's not here, so I can't speak for her. I'm pretty sure this is her favorite John Carpenter movie. I introduced her to this movie, and she's like, this is the greatest it's thing. It's fucking great. It uh, is. It I is. love, that's another one where I love all of the characters. Yeah. I love the the big, like, switch at the end where it's like, oh, Kurt Russell is not the hero. No. He's kind of a bubbling buffoon, <laughs> and the other yes. guy, it's kind of like when you watch Green Hornet. Yeah. Um, and I just love at the end, he's just got the lipstick on. The entire oh, time gosh. while fighting. No he other movie. He stays a dickhead the entire movie. No other movie would have the balls to like embarrass their hero yeah. for the final cut, like the like, climactic battle. They have no problems doing that. Like when he goes in and to the brothel and he oh, wears the glasses. Oh my Boy, gosh. I sure would like a Chinese He's girl with green eyes. And dogs out here. <laughs> it was. So <laughs> it's endlessly quotable too. Like oh my god, the lines are insane. Yeah. So the, uh, so the army and navy and the country, uh, the wars that they have won. As to America's colors, the colors that never run. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. I did a poster yeah. that just says Jack wants his truck back. <laughs> That's which is funny. basically, um, I, that, that has an origin, but uh, yeah. But yeah. I, uh, <sighs> it's, it's an incredible film. I don't understand how it Flop though. It seems like such a fun 80s It might have been too weird at the time. Uh, again, really? it's one of those things where it's like, what is this? I, it was almost I, a Western. The, the studio, I think that's, the studio- It does play like that too. It does, especially in the um, alley where they just go, yeah. But I think yeah, it was one of those things, like the, the way the like, story goes. The studio's yeah. like, we're not doing a Western. So like, you, cause I guess Westerns just weren't doing well. So yeah. they, they modernized it, but I think that makes but it even better. It's this just, weird cocktail that just works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's got it's got pretty much everything. Yeah. Amazing and effects. really good. Yeah, really good special effects. Great action. Great comedy. Yeah, it is. Um, it's fun. James Hong's a fucking. Treasure. I want to read the comic where uh, isn't there a comic where um, Jack meets Snake Plissken? There's some comic I think where there's I don't know. two. I meet. never I never heard of that. I know there's Big Trouble in Little China comics. I do know I that they know that. exist, but I've never read them. Yeah, I kind of want to see that co that crossover comic yeah. where they meet. <laughs> Maybe they pick uh. up McCready on the way. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a good choice for the best. What do you think? It's tough. Like you were saying, there's such a different variety. And I never... I always knew John Carpenter was a great director, yeah. but I didn't realize how great of a director he was until I did this little marathon yesterday mm -hmm. because you have like amazing directors like, I don't know, Tarantino and stuff like that, where mm -hmm. you watch the, like if you do a marathon, them, you, you say that same vibe. It's very formulaic. Yeah. Yes. These, These are jumping all over are the place. fucking awesome. Well, he also and there's has a different more, Tarantino vibe. only has a few movies. Really. But I'm just saying like directors in general, uh, yeah. you get into that, th their world. Yeah. He has such a variety. I, you don't get bored. I could have watched so many more John Carpenter movies yesterday yeah. because you are like, I literally go from big trouble in uh, little China to in the mouth of madness. Mm -hmm. And that was, I was like, this, this is insane. You're, you literally directed these around a similar time period. Yeah. It's so different. So it's so hard to choose the best made one because it, it's not just one genre, mm -hmm. but that's what makes it difficult. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It really is. Because, like, to me, Big Trouble in Little China is more of, like, almost like a action-packed comedy. And I'm just like, I don't I don't know. Like, I re I'm between The Thing and Halloween. Okay. I'm between these two. Because Halloween is it's just this, this classic. Everyone knows Halloween. Yeah. If out of all of his films, I would honestly say most people in this world would know Halloween. Mm-hmm. Besides sure. of just being a franchise, it's so rememberable. That's memorable, how you... not rememberable. 
Fuck you. Okay. Fuck you. The grammar Nazi. Yes. It's rememberable it is, to it, me. It is memorable. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> when you're here, I need to speak crystal. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but yes, that is just so. But then also, I think the thing has been done so well. So can you too. can you not decide? I can't. Well, tiebreaker. I'm going with the thing is this best movie. Okay. Okay. And not just because okay. it's the 40th anniversary and that's good yeah. for analytics. Uh, no, I'm going for the thing because I really do think like top to bottom, like you said, well-rounded, like yeah. story, screenplay, yep. everything. Yep. I think this is like perfect. The it acting. is. I love this movie. Like even yep. as much as I love Halloween, there's still some like indie stuff. Where, like there's there's noticeable stuff where it's like, wow, sure aren't a lot of palm trees in uh, <laughs> Illinois here. My only contention yeah. is the fact that it's a remake. Yeah, but barely. Uh, like yeah. barely. If anything, it's a good adaptation of the original novel, not so much a remake of that other. It's film. a great adaption of the original. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, it's it's one of the flagships that breathe new life from uh, yeah. the, the atomic age into the contemporary. Yes, uh, the yes. setting is great. The music is beautiful by Ennio yes. Morricone. Oh, yeah. um, usually, I like John Carpenter's score, but his score is great. Oh, it's great. I mean, he was like, "Hey, Ennio, en 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 yeah. do do just do the bump bump." <laughs> you know, like I do on mine. Yeah. You just do that. And no. like like I said, the 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 creature effects. We talked about the it a lot in um. The, we talked about, about a lot in our thing prequel. Yes. Uh, the Rambo teen effects, yeah. And after we do this, uh, me and Crystal are recording a commentary for hey. the thing. So we'll talk about it a yes, little bit more. Cool. Um, but yeah, I think it's an amazing film. Uh, it is. I'm glad it eventually became like a cult classic. I think TV helped because they played on TV yeah. a lot. The same thing happened with like Terminator, you know? Yeah. Which I mentioned uh, in the thing to 2011 video, they have that awful TV version with narration. Oh yeah, yeah, <sighs> that was that was. This rough. is Outpost 31, <laughs> and here's your cast of characters and the uh, dog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. So it my grandfather introduced me to this movie, like a lot of these movies, and that's yeah. actually this is the actual tape. Oh no, this is the actual tape. Um, from Grandma. and I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But like he's like, hey, this is the thing. I had heard of this movie previously because mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine had the tape, but I didn't watch it. And then my grandfather got it. He's like, hey, you like John Carpenter with like Halloween and whatnot? I'm like, sure. He's like, well, let's watch this movie. <laughs> and I was totally like, different. cool. I'm like, oh, why are they trying to shoot that poor dog? Oh, oh my God. God. And of course, I it's still in storage, but uh, left such an effect to me. I bought that original toy with Kurt Russell and oh, the dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm still buying toys today like what? this. Kurt That's right. Because he came with the hat. Toys oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you need And of hat. course, on peg warmers, we cover this on peg warmers. Someone, I didn't check the box before I bought it, so someone cracked it open to steal the shotgun. <laughs> um, That's funny. They're doing the box set of the, the, the dog monster. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? That's that cool. I already I have a dog monster. Yeah, well, but now, now we can buy it again. One. Okay. Two dog uh, monsters. And again, Keith David is in that one mm -hmm. too. Uh, it's really, it, the movie is great at making you think like to this day, I'm still not sure who is the thing and when they became the thing. It's yeah. like a movie that you can really think about for mm -hmm. decades as I'm doing. The <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate whodunit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's such a great idea for a creature where it's just like, yeah, I can just, uh, it could be anything. It mm -hmm. does. It has no actual form. Yeah. yeah. It just mimics forms. Did that uh, book ever come out, The Frozen Hell? Yeah, it came out. I just never picked it up yet. Okay, okay. What's that? It's the... He uh, mentioned it, in the previous one. It's, yeah, I know. I'm trying to remember what you said about it. It's that. a short it's, story? Yeah, but it's the expanded That's version. That's what it is. Yeah, okay. the movie yeah, 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 yeah. I remember story, what you're saying. Expanded. I would love to read that. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm going with uh, the best is the thing. You're, I actually... Now that you said all that, no. you're... I, yeah. So, Just so the story, the acting, the mm -hmm. effect, it really is. So the thing wins. Joe loses again. Uh, no, loses again. Loses again. <laughs> no, we've been making bets lately. Yeah. I, won, oh, I won the Friday, the Jason goes to hell bet. Well, he won the bet, but it's not that that piece of trivia was incorrect. It just wasn't in the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. trivia. And then the fucking alien what? and Pre alien, alien Predator, Predator comic is bullshit about? because it was a parallel fucking release. Nah, 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 nah. No, I was I right. I was right. I will continue. I'm just, I just can't stop winning. 
he reminds me of like <laughs> I'm like, I'm mom. the, guys, guys, like, you just I'm the Charlie right. Sheen of YouTube. It's just better if you just say, yes, Tony, you are right. But I wasn't wrong. I just said it wasn't in, just it's just not Tony, in the movie. He's good and smart. He's <laughs> I didn't say you were wrong about the scene existing. I was in the shower the it. other day thinking about it. I'm like, fucking Tony. <laughs> And I'm like, I, I know so stuff. Happy. I know movies, right? <laughs> Made me question my whole reality. You were right. You were right that the thing existed. It just didn't, wasn't no, in the version of the movie. Stop thinking about Tony in the shower, please. Speaking right. of the thing. Help it. Speaking of the thing, the effects are great. And I think we talked about previously, but we'll do it here. There was one dodgy effect, and luckily they cut it out of the movie. The stop motion? I per I, I like it, but I could see why it was cut. Yeah, it's because the little bit of stop motion we see is real quick, yeah. and that scene lingers a little too much, but the dog comes out yeah, of it. The thing with the dynamite. Uh, yeah. I got one. lost real fast when you guys were just talking. I was like, what the fuck are you two talking about now? Holy anyway, oh, the, oh, the anyway. I was like, wait, wait, where'd we go? I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Shower thoughts anyway. to... That, I also think about the thing in the shower. This too. was our episode. I always think about the thing that Tony. Okay. I always think. I always think about when um, Norris gets. You know, he the dude. His chest opens and yeah. and bites off the guy's uh, uh, arms. Such. That's a good what scene. you think about in the shower. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wow, what a cool effect. You guys think in the shower? I zone out. I'm like, how long have I been here? Oh God. <laughs> well, I that's wait. at the end, right? <laughs> like also zone Where I still get shampoo thinking. in my hair, and I'm like, wait, what time is it? I sit yeah. in the shower and I just, I'm just like, how, do you just how cry? many times do I have to bang my head on the wall to just end it? Oh my god! That's when you fill up the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> and you just take it, take a there. couple of fucking Tylenol PNs. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna do this show forever <laughs> with that, with that redheaded banshee. Oh god, is this my life? Yeah. I, oh my god. I just realized my job is to talk about stupid movies with one of my ex-girlfriends. What is my fucking life? <laughs> I need to go to Antarctica with just a bunch of bros and just get away from it all. Would it be better if you think about Mint? Is that a little bit better? Mint, it, mint is the the light in the darkness. I love. Uh, the, she's I been love lighting it. up my Instagram she's, feed. So it's just me and Joe having it. That causes him one of the bangs. Mint salad. The mint salad is the diamond in the rough. I fucking love mint. We all love, love mint salad. Everyone loves mint. But I'm glad it's just Johanna and I make him want to die. <laughs> I'm glad I have that accomplishment in life. I get a free pass because I lost that bet. Now Tony's like, yeah, you can always be on <laughs> I, because I'm better I, than you. <laughs> Joe is my best friend because I keep winning her. Anyway, got a wow, got real, off, real off the rails there at the end, didn't it? Uh, John Carpenter rules. <laughs> John Carpenter does rule. Uh, that is it for us. What do you think is the best John Carpenter movie, parentheses, that you've seen? Uh, and I highly recommend checking out. Asterisk so, that you've yeah, seen. I highly recommend checking out Dark Star, Elvis yeah. if you can, uh, and Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness is getting a little bit more well known these days. I think they're There's, the kills. I think have you got that? I think they're gonna phenomenal. redo it as a miniseries. Or there were plan before lockdown really? there were plans to redo yeah. it as a miniseries, but I haven't heard anything since I mean, then. whatever. I don't know if I would like that as a miniseries. Maybe. My only issue with Prince of Darkness is at the end it's like the ultimate evil's coming and it's like, oh it's a big rubber hand. Whoops. I'm like, could have done without that part. <laughs> but uh, other than that I love the movie. It's, it's, just, it's, the, good. it's just the big rubber hand. I'm like, I don't know about that. Well at least it'll drive people to seek out the original. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And like I said, it, there's a beautiful 4K restoration of mm -hmm. it. I will uh, shout out the 4K restoration of Halloween really threw me off. Have you watched it yet? No, I don't have so, the 4K so versions. It's, it's the original color correction. So it's the cooler one or the warmer one? The warmer one. So like people have seen the one from like 2000. Yeah. Uh, where it's like, you know, the deep blues yeah. and yeah. the saturation and stuff. Yeah. So, so when I got it on 4K, it was the original color correction. They give you the option of having the original remaster on a, on a separate Blu-ray. But didn't Cundy like supervise that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but that's the thing. So you get the 4K yeah. one with the original from its release. Right. And then the other discs are like the, uh, it's the Blu-ray version and then the Blu-ray with the color correction from 2000. That's cool. And I think even the TV version's in there. But yeah, I thought my... I thought my TV was messed up. I'm like, what's wrong with the colors? Because <gasps> you've seen I that don't, one so I've many only, times. 
Because yeah. the only time I've seen the original vert before the remaster yeah. was the fucking Blockbuster Presents. Yeah. And I don't remember what that looked like. Could you imagine, like, <laughs> authoring the DVD and be like, man, this is really warm. Let's just cool yeah. that down real but quick. But now that I've seen it and going back and watching the other cut, I'm like, wow, they really did fuck around with the colors a lot, didn't they? <laughs> Michael Myers is straight up blue in a few scenes. <laughs> it, it makes it feel completely different. Yes, it does. Yeah. Color uh, is like the biggest difference. Yeah. It really does. That's Mimic is zone. a big one too. Yeah. With really? that, yeah, with yeah. the color grading. I but yeah, love the... when you play with colors in movies. Mm-hmm. It, it just that's the same thing with like live entertainment too. When you're playing with the colors. Oh it, yeah, big time. It, it, it sets it, a mood. Lights and colors is mm-hmm. is so tremendously important. It's just as important as the everything music else. as the yes. music. Yeah, everything. everything. Yes, uh, and it can change like the different looks of a character. It can make them look meaner. It can make yeah. them look nicer. It can make them look all different things. Mm-hmm. I can go on for hours talking. Yes, about this. <laughs> but I highly recommend those, especially. Body Bag. If you want to see John Carpenter mm-hmm. act, mm-hmm. definitely check out Body Bag. It's a great anthology too. Dude, so. Body Bags is good. Yeah, Body you're Bags really big with anthologies. Love anthologies. I love anthologies. No one's talking uh, about you. you don't huh? love anthologies. I love anthologies. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I, maybe Christ. I don't love them as much as you. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. You know I have what? a whole show you know dedicated to an anthology television show. You know what? Fuck you. I hate anthologies. <laughs> Just tell one story, you fuckers. God damn it. Actually, it's like the best. I think that's my all, anthologies are my favorite because it allows you to tell stories in like a short amount of time. Yeah. You don't have to drag it out. You don't have to sit there and go, that's really cool. And I love this. And then yeah. drag it out for a fucking hour and a half. And then it yeah. falls apart. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, check those out. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, join our Patreon, Woo. our mailing list. Call us on the voicemail line. Uh, well, now that we're down to one a week, I have time to actually go through the voicemails and do them regularly. Sweet. It's going to be great. And we can do more Patreon content. Woo! Like the commentary we're about to record after I do my premiere, because we're filming this right before a premiere. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to record one for The Thing, so you can hear me and Crystal talk more about that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, Joe, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. We're also Ooh. on YouTube, too. So I know you're watching this right yes. now, so jump over to Movie Dumpster and when you're done here and subscribe, please. Speaking of commentaries, yeah. me and Joe and Sean, we did one for Alien, Alien Private, Private Eye. Eye. Make sure you go over to Vinegar Syndrome and buy that Blu-ray. Oh, I love Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah. Make sure By the way, you got me in trouble with an angry commenter over that. Oh, why? Apparently Red Letter covered it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, but then they were like ripping off Red Letter again. So I was like, oh, did they cover it? And then the guy was yelling at me more. And I'm like, well, they did a review. We did a commentary track. That's what I said. Yeah. And then he he thinks I'm ripping off more stuff. And he brought up the time that I reviewed Shark Exorcist. What, what, oh, he called it Demon Exorcist. I'm like, what is that? He's like, oh, Shark Exorcist. You ripped him off. And I was like, I've never reviewed Shark Exorcist. Uh, also, no. I'm sorry, but does I, Red I Letter Media him. own the copyright to Alien Private Eye? No, because I asked him. I was like, hey, you know, they've actually covered a lot of movies that Cisco and Eber did. Do you give them shit? And he's yeah. like, pff, pff. Well, I just <laughs> love that. Is that what he did? I, I love that he yelled at me for one, get, he, for one covering a movie that he got the name wrong of. Uh, he got mad at me for reviewing a movie that I didn't actually review. <laughs> I shot something for the sequel that wasn't used, uh, but I never reviewed Shark Exorcist. Uh, no, and, and it's a thing of like, you know, the the Blu-ray had just come out from Vinegar Syndrome, so I was like, yeah. oh, that would be a great one to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, the commentary track is not on the Blu-ray. You need to buy the Blu-ray, yes. sign up for our Patreons, and then you can listen to the commentary Because like you said, it is free on YouTube, but it's, it is it's free. A, such a terrible VHS. It's really transfer, bad, yeah. and Vinegar Syndrome did an amazing job cleaning it up, and it's 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 worth it to own. I don't know why. <laughs> it's such a stupid That's fucking... why I love them so much, because they dig out these they fucking will, they nonsense will restore, titles. They will like, the worst yeah. goddamn movie. And probably because it's easy to get the rights and release. Hey, guys. Oh, totally yeah. fine with me. How, how far away are they from, like, hey, guys, we're restoring uh, little Jimmy's sixth birthday from 1974. <laughs> it's like, music. We're gonna have the commentary. Track. <laughs> well, they just oh did "Scared to Death," which we're gonna cover, yeah. and that's uh, the, the the precursor to Sinjinor, which is a big favorite of mine. So I'm very excited for that. Mm-hmm. Cool. And yeah, so check out Movie Dumpster. Check out our stuff, and uh, let us know in the comments what your favorite and what what your favorite John Carpenter movie is, and what you think the best John Carpenter movie is. And we'll talk yeah. to you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See ya. We are waiting for the Dark Souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. Like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment, and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys, so I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.